there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna paint glass marbles in watercolor. And if you'd like to get better at painting glass objects in watercolor, I have a watercolor glass class that I will link up down below so you can check it out if you're interested. I'm starting off by using a circle template, and this is sold in the drafting section of any office supply store to make my marble circles here. The reason I like to do this is because you got plenty of time to mess up those circles during the painting process. You might as well start off with ones that are perfect. And we've got a big shooter in the center, and then we have some smaller ones. And you can, of course, um, alter the size to fit your imagination. I put my photo of the marbles up in the corner. I'll also put that on my blog. And um, I recommend that if you have some marbles at home, just lay them out on a piece of white cloth, and that would be the best way to practice this lesson because um, you can see exactly how the light falls. Now, I'm using masking fluid, which is a liquid latex that you can use to preserve the white of the paper when you're watercoloring. I'm using a small brush that I coated with soap before I dipped it into the masking fluid and I'm adding the little white sparkles on the marbles as well as the bursts of light on the table that are right inside of the shadows because that's something you see when you paint glass is that you end up with highlights within the shadows um, which is just so pretty and I just love it. It's one of the best uh, qualities of painting glass. Now I'm going to start off with a um, kind of a wash to do the, the subtle wrinkles in the fabric or kind of the texture of the fabric and I'm using a mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue for this. I wet the paper so I get soft edges with my shadow and I'm not worried about any of that color going in the marbles. Um, with the exception of that shooter in the center, the other marbles are translucent, so it's perfectly normal to see some of the table color coming through. Of course, I chose white fabric because it'd be a little easier to work on, but if you're using a colored cloth, then you want to make sure you get some of that color from the surface into the marbles as well. Now I'm going in with some of that same color, that same mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, mix of beautiful gray, and I'm adding some shadows onto the, uh, the clear marbles, getting it right in there. Now I'm going in with some ultramarine blue and I'm painting the waves in that opaque glass shooter marble there. And I'm basically just painting what I see. And I, I, a lot of people will ask um, ask questions about painting glass and or painting anything really. And they'll want a they'll want a gimmick. They'll want a formula that will work every time. And the thing that works every time is painting what you see. It's drawing what you see and not what you think you see um, and not what you expect to see, but actually observing what you're painting, what you're drawing, and putting down the colors that you actually see there. And a lot of times it's difficult because our brain tells us that we're looking at one thing. But when we look at it with our eyes, we're saying, no, I know that's orange, but I'm seeing some really dark gray there, or I'm seeing some black there, or, you know, you're seeing these different colors. So you really need to be true to what your eyes show you and not what you think, you know, something should look like. You want to also be aware of the variation of saturation and value. So like if you're looking at that yellow marble, for instance, um, there is a really deep band of orange glass in the center, and it's a little bit darker where it's next to that, that lighter orange band. You want to capture those things because that's what's going to give the marbles their depth. That's what's going to make it look like you're looking through um, a layer of glass, and it's just going to make it look a lot more accurate. Now, that blue one that I'm painting now, it's like a cracked glass, so I'm dabbing on the color. I'm stippling it on so I have different concentrations of color, and it gives me that fractured glass look. And then the shooter is very smooth and opaque, so it's a nice contrast to the other um, the other colors and textures that we have here. So when you have um, a composition like this that can be quite um, quite repetitive, we've got you know five circles. You want to find the variety where you can find it. You want to find the nuance where you can find it. So that keeps a simple composition from being boring. And that's something I'm usually telling my students that you know you can paint something that's fairly simple, but you have to look for the variety. You don't want to have all of your things lined up like soldiers, you want to find the nuance on each piece, but you've got enough repetition there that everything's going to feel cohesive. So um, so keep that in mind. Look for the nuance because it's the nuance that shows um, everyday muggles that don't paint. It shows them what an artist sees. And I think that's the big, um, you know, I think the big marker of art, an artist is that you can see some beauty in something ordinary. And when you paint it, you can show other people that never saw the beauty in it before the beauty of that object. So it's kind of like being a witcher 
a wizard and um, and having like a magical power, you know? So show those muggles the beauty in the ordinary when you make a painting. That's what I think anyway. So now I'm going in with another layer of shadows and you're gonna notice in the shadows that you're gonna see color in the shadows. Now, there are brighter colors in the highlights. The, the highlights are still masked off within the shadows, but like you can see reflections like the shadow under the orange marble to the, um, to the right has a little bit of an orange tone to it. Um, this, you may have a simpler shadow situation if you set your marbles up in your home. I have so many lights going on because I am painting this where I film. I took the photo, I'm looking at it. I'm painting from the, um, from the setup, not from a photo. And I have like three overhead lights and then I've got a light on the, um, the still life itself. So I do get some competing shadows and highlights but if you're if you're painting a still life in a natural environment you're probably going to get competing highlights and shadows because you might have light coming in from a window and light coming in from a lamp and um i enjoy the the um the challenge of painting with multiple light sources if you don't if that's a little too advanced or you feel a little um unsure about where to put your shadows then um then set your still life a little bit further away from you, put a light directly on it, and then maybe use a task lamp for your painting area so that's not affecting your um, your still life as much. So that's a, a good way to practice if you're um, you know just getting started out. So now I'm using a rubber cement pickup, which is just basically a big um, you know chunk of rubber to remove my masking fluid. You can also rub it away with your fingers, but I don't like to do that on watercolor paper because you can transfer oils and lotions and stuff from your hands onto your paper, and then your paint might not stick over that. So the rubber cement is not, pickup is nice. It saves your fingertips too because it can it can take a bit to rub that off. Now I'm adding the colors that I see with in the highlights onto my painting. So obviously that transparent dark red marble has a really bright burst of red in the shadow, in the center of the shadow where the highlight is. The clear shooter marble has a little bit of green and yellow. I think it's grabbing the color of the light and kind of scattering it. Um, we've got a little bit of blue in the shadow from the shooter, and we've got a little bit of orange, not as much orange in the orange marble as it seems like you ought to have, but I think it's because there's so much clear, and what you're seeing is the magnified stripe of orange in the center of the marble, that's what we're seeing, but as far as light passing through it, it's not really passing through those opaque swirls of glass, it's more just um, going through the clear portions of the glass marble, so you're not seeing quite as much of the, um, of the orange in the highlight and shadow there. So uh, here's a, where I'm gonna warn you about masking fluid a little bit, and you probably can see where I'm going with this. Um, I don't use masking fluid very often for this reason. It can look a really chunky and gummy and awkward on your painting, and if you look at the highlight under the orange marble, you can see that really rough, crazy edge I have there. For whatever reason, I didn't paint it out very smoothly when I put it in there. Maybe the texture of the paper threw me off? I'm not sure, but anyway, it's not looking good. So um, I had to go back in with my shadow color and refine the edge of that shadow. Um, honestly, I probably would have been better off just to use a white pen for all of my highlights, but I do like to uh, retain that white of the paper sometimes and just kind of have a play like that. And I think it's an important tool to know how to use. Um, and masking fluid is, make sure you get removable masking fluid. Masking fluid is a wonderful, um, a wonderful tool for certain effects. So I do encourage you to give it a try. Um, a bottle of it will probably last you forever if you manage to take care of it so it doesn't dry out. And um, my recommendation for masking fluid is the Windsor & Newton uh, tinted yellow removable masking fluid. I find that that lasts a lot longer than other brands and doesn't seem to chunk up in the container like other brands do. I've had um, Grumbacher and other brands just kind of turn into a big blob on me, but the Windsor & Newton seems to last a lot longer. You can also transfer some of it into a smaller container for while you're working so you don't have to keep the whole jar open. And what I like to use for that, and I don't know if you can find them anymore, but do you remember 35 millimeter film canisters? Those were perfect just to pour out a little masking fluid in and um, use it up and then refill it, you know, after it's used up. And that way you don't have to open up the container very often and let air get to the masking fluid. So here what I'm doing is adding another layer onto my opaque blue marble there. I love how it's getting nice and round and it's getting a nice saturation of color. Um, and you know, you can keep layering up until you get the color and the texture that you want. There's kind of a bit of a, te of a blue in that milky stripe and I'm just getting um, some swirls of color there. Now I kind of, um, 
Uh, with this painting, I definitely painted what I saw, but as I was uh, going along, I kind of regretted using the circle highlights. You can see how you can see that little ring of highlight in each of the marbles. That's because I had my ring light on that uh, lighting my still life there because it's just the easiest one to move. All my other lights are hooked up to my um, my ceiling lighting fixture. So um, that was the easiest one for me to move and I kind of regret doing that. I could have just used a single circle of light there. I used my artistic license, but I wanted to paint what I see. I don't think I really like that because that's not a typical light source you would see in a home. That's kind of something you'd only see in a studio. So I don't really like that. But um, but overall, I mean, I'm happy with the painting. I did decide to go in with my white Posca marker and add a few more sparkles and highlights because it's fun. You obviously don't need to do that because it looked fine before, but um, sometimes it's fun to do that. It's also fun to go in with some colored pencils if you want to um, and add a little bit of, you know, cast reflection like right here. You see that uh, kind of half moon reflection I lifted out. I decided I wanted a little bit more. That would be the bounced light and bounced reflection from the fabric back up onto the marble. Now, because it's a little grainy looking on, the marbles because I didn't want to put too much colored pencil. I will dissolve that out with a little bit of solvent and what I'm using for this is a clear blending marker. I haven't got to that yet but I'm going to. Anytime you put the pencil in and you're like oh it's so grainy I don't like it you can use a alcohol based clear blending marker. You can use Gamzol. You could use a q-tip with a little paint thinner on it. Something to uh, break down that solvent. It'll lighten it up a little bit and make it look a little more natural and integrated into your watercolor work. So um, I just the marker is convenient. I like this Blix Studio uh, clear blender marker for whatever reason. I think it's just extra juicy and it just uh, really dissolves the um, the pigment really well. And um, there you have it. I mean, you can punch up the colors a little bit more, like I did here. I used a little red. I thought that that red marble needed a little bit of um, a little bit more. I decided to add a little bit more blue to the shooter. This is all pretty much. Um, Oh, I don't know. Gilding a lily. I, you know, sometimes you get into a painting and you're having so much fun that you don't want it to be over. That's kind of what was happening here. It's like, oh, I'm really enjoying this and I don't want to, I don't want to stop painting. So I just added more things, but I like the way it turned out. And I hope you give something like this a try. Look at things around your home that inspire you and paint them. And it'll be fun to look back at in a few years because you'll remember those items and they'll mean something special to you. I hope you enjoyed this. Please give me a thumbs up if you did and check out the link to my watercolor glass class below if you're interested in learning more about painting glass objects in watercolor. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.